Hi friend, I'm Sharon Motley from ICCF, International Covenant Connections Fellowship. You can find us at iccf.us. I want to share with you today hard decisions. Join me for the next few moments. Hi friend, once again, I'm Sharon Motley. My husband and I, Apostle Bill Motley, we are the leaders of ICCF, International Covenant Connections Fellowship. You can find us at iccf.us for short uh, trainings from many of our board members. We're here to be a supplement to you as a leader, a supplement as a pastor. We want to help you grow and know. Hallelujah, I like that. I wanna help you grow and no. And today I want to talk to you about hard decisions because as a pastor, as a leader in your ministry, many times we have to make hard decisions. And hard decisions are one of those things that leave you feeling uh, many times frustrated or apprehensive. How am I going to do it? What am I going to do it? How can I make these hard decisions and yet keep my leaders? Uh, many times, even uh, in our ministry, we run an academy, we run a daycare, we run a before and after school and a summer camp, and we, we hire quite a few employees. And many times, these employees, um, they don't go to our church. They go to other churches, uh, and, and they're just simply coming to work, but they don't work out. And so um, you have to go and give them the gift of goodbye. But also in ministry, many times um, it doesn't work out. It might be a praise and worship leader. It might be a head usher. And you're looking at they're just not working out. And as a leader, you have to go and somehow maintain uh, your pastorship or maintain your leadership while you're letting these people go. That's not easy. So I just kind of want to help you a few minutes today and encourage you because many times the enemy will come at you and be like, you know, if you were a better leader, they you wouldn't have to be doing this and, and they're going to hate you and they're never going to speak to you again and they're going to make your name mud and, you know, all these things come to you. And, but as a leader, you have to be strong. You have to know, thus saith the Lord. Um, we just had a situation where I had to let a girl go. And when I brought her in, and, and I'm just giving you this example so that it'll help you when you have to let people go. And of course, this is an employee. And I taught him how much I love them, how much I believed in them, and how it was one of the hardest things I ever had to do. And it was. And um, in the meantime, I said, but, um, I'm going to have to let you go for the good of the ministry, for the good of this area. Uh, it's not something I wanted to do, but you've pushed my hand in this area. And I described what they did and how many chances I had given them and how I had worked with them. But at the end of the day, I was going to have to let them go. And I always say, you know, if you'll leave with a good attitude, then I'll give you this or severance pay or I'll give you a reference. I'm not going to lie, but I'll try to keep my comments to a minimum. So when you're dealing with paid employees, a little bit different than volunteers, but you still many times have to give the gift of goodbye. And so then how do you do it though where leadership is concerned? Uh, and you're in a church and these are not paid employees. These are people that are volunteering their time. First of all, let me say this, even with paid employees, don't wait until there's a problem that has escalated. Begin to do constant evaluation. So I never go in and, and I've had five complaints and then I talk to a person. I begin to talk to them with the first complaint. So like, let's say you have a head usher and they're just mean to everybody. They're mean to people that come in the church. They're telling them, I don't care where you sit, you know, go somewhere, don't do that, get your crying baby out, and, and they're just mean. Don't wait until you've had five complaints to deal with that situation. Begin to deal with it with the first concern. And normally you wanna sit down. And of course, there's always two sides to every story. So don't sit down bomb blasting them. Sit down with a, you know, hey, there's been a situation and I wanna get your side of it. I like to know what happened. We had a person and, and whether you, normally I don't call their name because I don't wanna cause contention. And I'll say, we had a complaint that um, you went up and spoke to a woman about her baby. And she said, you were extremely ugly. But, you know, I know there's two sides to the, every story. Would you like to explain your side? And then I listen. And, you know, I listen. Then I listen again. And then normally I end up saying something like, well, let's just make sure that when we're addressing people, this is how we do this. Hey, we have a baby crying room, a, a infant room that you can go to if you'd like to a nurse your baby or maybe if they're just not happy in service would you like for me to show you the room so don't just tell them not to do it tell them the answer they may not know there's an answer 
They may not know there's a crying baby room. They may not know there's a nursery. So give them instruction. Second time it happens, um, the, the conversation's going to be a little bit stronger, and we're going to say, hey, um, brother, sister, so-and-so, um, we've had another complaint um, that, you know, you addressed a crying baby or where somebody was seat, seated and you told them to move. You know, are, are we, you know, is there something we need to discuss? Uh, and we might need to discuss at that point moving to another ministry. Um, once again, people can complain. There's two sides to every story. Because by the third complaint, we should be about done. Uh, and to the point that we say, hey, um, why don't we put you somewhere that it's more compatible for you? Maybe it won't be uh, in a public view where you're having to deal with this. Guys, for the betterment of your ministry, for the betterment of your business, you better get that person in the right position. Amen. They'll hurt your church. They'll hurt your ministry. I've had people that we have long suffered with, and they've hurt our daycare, our academy, and uh, I'm, uh, I'm going to call myself long-suffering Sharon. Uh, but it has to come a day that you say, that's enough. We're done. We love you, and let's part in peace. Uh, volunteers, let's move you to an area that's God-ordained, not this area. Amen. So, not always easy. My husband taught me years ago, confront. Confront in love. Confront in peace. Confront to bring resolution. But then at the end of the day, protect the ministry that God is giving you and do it in love. I'd rather lose one than lose ten. I don't want to lose any at all, but we have to do and protect the ministry of Almighty God. I hope this little tidbit has helped you today. You can find other videos just like this at iccf.us. We love you today. God bless you today. I'm Sharon Motley, and I look forward to next time.